Hi everybody and thanks so much for joining me in this tone series. It's been a joy to make and I hope that it's been useful for you. In this video, we're talking about how to use scales to increase your bow control and tone production. I'll give you my progression of how to use three octave scales to develop an artistic tone. This is always an exciting time for me when I get to introduce these concepts to students because it means they're on the verge of really sounding professional. Before diving into these exercises, you should be able to pull full tone with beautiful seamless bow changes as demonstrated in my last video. You can grab whatever scale book you have that includes three octave scales, or you can use a scale system that I have linked in the description below, which includes all of the fingerings that I like. Let's get to it. So why am I so excited to talk about scales? It's because in my own progression, when I started to really focus on these slow bow scales, that's when my tone really began to sing and I started being able to get the sound that I wanted and to project when I was soloing with orchestras. The concept is simple. You're gonna grab a metronome, you're gonna throw it onto 60 beats per minute, and we're gonna progressively go faster and faster through our scales, starting at a very slow speed. The standard speed that I start with most days is four beats per bow, although if you're just beginning, perhaps this is a little bit too slow and you could start with three beats per bow. This tempo is very slow on purpose. The slower the tempo, the more difficult this exercise is. What we're aiming to do at each speed is to test the limits of what our fiddle can give. Since we're gonna be gradually speeding up the bow, we're gonna hone this ability at every bow speed. In doing this daily, we're gonna develop a soloistic control over our sound where we can project without getting any crunch in our sound. I can say without hesitation that when my students are doing this consistently, their sound is way better. And also when they drop off with their consistency, I can notice it. Often if I am noticing that their sound is dropping, I ask them, are you being consistent with your scales? And usually the answer is no. You carry on like this going all the way up the scale and all the way down. We're aiming to avoid any inconsistencies in the tone, but at the same time we're really trying to push the limit of what our fiddle can take. You want to ride that edge, and particularly when you're first starting to do this, you want to go over that edge sometimes so that you know right where that limit is. For most people, they're not getting that close to the edge until they really push themselves, and then they learn how much sound their fiddle can actually get out. Now it can be difficult to continue to try and push yourself on these slow bow scales. They last a long time. And so one thing that I like to think about is to try and crescendo each note into the next note, but then not to get any quieter when I start the next note. This sort of forward momentum progression keeps me yearning and it also keeps the scales a little bit more interesting. The next speed is three beats per bow and when we do this we have more bow now so we should also have more sound. Then two beats per bow. Each time when you get more bow, you should be getting more sound. One beat per bow comes next. This one's an interesting one because it's actually quite a fast bow speed. The other ones were about maintaining slow bow control. This one is about not skating, even when you're using the whole bow. So I'd recommend that you still aim to go to the extreme frog and to the extreme tip. Remember the goal is to develop control over all bow speeds. So we're aiming to develop control over our fast bow speed in this one beat per bow. After this, we move on to our faster scales for which I use two beats per bow each time. I'll show you how it goes. I won't linger on these too long because this is part of the tone series. When I make a scale video, I'll talk about these more. When I'm doing these scales, I add a turn at the beginning and at the end, which makes it so that there are 48 notes in the scale. This makes it divisible by a lot of numbers, which means you can break it into a lot of different rhythm progressions and have it work out with the metronome. The turn's like this at the beginning. And when you come back down.
progression may seem simplistic, but almost every fantastic violinist that I've spoken to in depth has done something similar to this progression. It could be that I speak to a lot of people who have similar training as I do, but I think there's something behind this kind of work. Not only did it work well for me, but it consistently works really, really well for my students. If you're finding this information helpful, it would be so helpful to me and to the others looking for this information if you would hit that like and subscribe button so that the algorithm can push it to more people. I'm perhaps a little bit old school in my mentality that if you have three hours to practice, about 45 minutes of them should be devoted to scales. I'm not meaning just these slow bow scales, I'm talking about double stops and also arpeggios and a whole scale system, which I'll talk about again in my scale video. But I am saying that it's critical to focus on your slow bow control in scales each day in order to develop a soloistic sound. Thank you so much for spending time with me and watching these tone series videos. I hope they continue to be helpful. Check out this next video on the three main variables that we can change in order to get different colors and textures in our playing and to develop a broad artistic color palette.